Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the second time we're recording this video because the first time we got five minutes into it and there was no audio. So <laughs> we're here to talk about Mother Teresa. And even if you're not religious, she had a massive impact on the world. She had a lot to say about goals, about taking action, putting yourself out there, getting stuff done. You've jumped straight into this one. Do not allow yourself to be disheartened by any failure as long as you have done your best. Anything you want to say on this one? Well, what I said previously. Yeah, just in, repeat everything in you the said video before. that no one it's will see. It's so fucking <laughs> weird repeating something that you just said five minutes ago. You guys don't know that. You don't know that we just did a video with nothing in it. But yeah, it's funny trying to remember what you just said. Yeah, it, with this quote, it comes across as something that's very nurturing and mm. very loving. And almost as if the way you would speak to a child, like you did your best and that's mm. like, that's all that matters. Like it doesn't really matter the outcome as long as you're always doing your best. But I think somewhere along the way, as we grow up and become adults, a lot of that gets lost. Mm. And that's, there's very much the sense of we're not doing good enough and we need to be doing better and you need more and like trying doesn't matter. The results do. Mm. And I think you lose a lot of the love and compassion. And as a result, working on your goals or wanting to achieve things, it becomes a lot harder because you keep telling yourself that what you're doing is not good enough. And even if you're doing like your literal best, as best as you possibly can, like there's nothing else that you could do, that's still not good enough. And that mm. in itself can be very disheartening and very discouraging versus the opposite of giving yourself love, giving yourself com compassion and saying that it's okay, I will just keep going as long as I keep trying because that's that mindset is, going, is what is going to help you stick at working on goals longer term. And by working on goals longer term, that's when you get the big results because often, especially for really big goals, whether that's money or finding a meaningful relationship, whatever that might be, it takes time mm. and consistency. Mm. And sometimes there might be days where you not, might not be super motivated or super excited, but to get yourself through those days, the being hard on yourself, the yelling at yourself, that being used as motivation, that wears off. It's limited. It lasts for a few months. You can yell at yourself for a few months, but then you run out of energy and you have a breakdown. Yeah. Yeah. Versus love or compassion or kindness towards yourself is the thing that's very, very sustainable. Yeah, for sure. You can kind of think of it like this with any goal that any of you guys or girls might have, you are responsible for the intention and the effort, but not always the outcome, which is often dependent on many other variables, which are outside of your control. As an example, if you are a guy and you're working on going outside and hitting on women and approaching them and telling them that they're pretty and asking them out, you are responsible for the intention to go out there and do it. You are responsible for the effort to, you know, give yourself a little bit of a pep talk and walk outside and walk up to a girl and say hello. You're responsible for those things. You're responsible for playing the numbers game, talking to lots of women because not every single one is going to be single. But you are not responsible for each individual woman. If she says, no, thank you, I'm not single, but thank you for talking to me, you're not responsible for that. That's not a failure. It's not a rejection. You didn't do anything wrong. There's not something else that you should have done. Or, man, maybe if I was more of an alpha male, she would have not had a boyfriend. No, that's outside of your control. The only thing that you are responsible for is your own self-improvement and playing the numbers game. It applies to everything, like business. You are responsible for giving as much value as you can to your customers or your clients or your audience or whatever. You're responsible for making the best product or the best service that you possibly can. You are responsible for sharing it with as many people as you can and offering it to people. But you are not responsible for the people that say, no, thank you. I don't want that. You're not responsible for the people that say, I'm not going to give you money. That's got nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. So focus on what you can change and don't worry about the things that you can't. Another quote is spread the love of God through your life, but only use words when necessary. And I think this is a really great one because it kind of emphasizes the fact of like, don't be preachy, whether that's about God, because God, especially the term God can really yeah, we all turn have this, people like, off. I, I bet you so many people right now, I, this, this would have been me years ago. You're listening to this quote and you're like, God, oh, well, actually I'm agnostic or I'm just not interested in religion. Or maybe, you know, I believe in God and I use that word, but like, I just don't have the strongest association with religion. And so you feel like a weirdness. Mother Teresa was the queen of like, I'm not going to go out there and be like, hello, have you heard of the great Lord? You know, our good Lord, Jesus Christ. Like, 
No, that will just turn people off, especially because she went to India, where most people are Hindu. There are a few Christians and Catholics there, but like most people are Hindu. And so her walking around on the streets being like, hello, poor person in poverty, would you like to read the Bible? That wouldn't have been the most loving, kind, compassionate thing that she could do, would it? And so her idea was like, I'm just going to love these people. I'm going to change their life. I'm going to give them food. I'm going to house them. I'm going to bathe them. I'm going to give them medication. I'm going to save their life. I'm going to do whatever I need to do. And then if they feel the love of God through that, then beautiful. If they don't, that's okay too. Like, I'm just going to work on loving them. I try and do the same thing in my content. I'm not perfect with it, but I try not to preach too much. And I try and just address whatever it is that the person is suffering from. I give them the solution. I try and help them. Sometimes I can get a bit preachy, sure, but I try not to. And so I think this is a really good example of like, people are more interested in your deeds and the things that you do rather than you just sitting there and preaching. And so many times in life will be a big hypocrite. You know, I've been a hypocrite a million times where you'll sit there and preach to someone else and tell them you shouldn't be doing that. And it's like, motherfucker, you're doing that. And then it's like, yeah, but do as I say, not as I do. And mm. so Mother Teresa liked to live her own philosophies. And I think this is a really good quote about taking action rather than just fucking talking about it. And so many people will be watching this right now going, yeah, 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 I agree. How many women did you go outside and say hello to today? Well, none, but I'm watching all of your content. That's not the same. Or did you start a business today, that business that you've been wanting to start for the last year? Well, no, Andy, because I was watching all your content and then I'm watching some other guy's content and then I'm reading all these books. You know, as Mother Teresa said, take action. You will spread love or you will achieve your goals through action and your good deeds, not just reading about them or not just watching some random YouTube video from some guy with a beautiful blue hat and a pretty girlfriend with earrings that are shaped like cherries. Not to be specific, not to call anyone out, but... I'm talking about us. <laughs> I really like this next one. We interfere with God's plans. And if you don't believe in God, that's fine. Just skip that little bit. When we push in someone or something else not suitable for us, be strict with yourself and then be very strict with what you are receiving from the outside. Yeah. I think if you don't resonate with God, the universe or like life, like life's plans, yeah. Um, that can be... Or your greater mission or your greater purpose, whatever word works for you. Yeah, a good switch out. But I guess what I see in this, I guess it's in a way a warning about what, like what things you're doing in your life and being mindful of the things that you bring into your life or the habits that you're creating, the things mm. that you're doing. Because I think it's so often, like, I guess I'm focusing on the not suitable for us part because I think there's a tendency if everybody else is doing it, or like if it's just the way that things go, you're like, oh, it's it's fine. Like everyone's doing it. It must it's normal. Yeah, it must I'm be normal. Do, yeah, and if not good for us, then fine. Like not harmful. When you know that's very much not true. Like a lot of people neglect their sleep and abuse caffeine. And how many people go on social media and have like mental health issues from social media and have given themselves ADHD from TikTok and, and you know all the drink the... too much. Yeah, and... yeah. How many people drink every <laughs> single fucking day or week? Like, yeah. whatever it might be, I think, in a way, this is, it's worth acknowledging what may or may not be good for you and maybe doing an inventory of your life and be like, okay, what is adding to my life? What is mm. not? I actually remember a while ago, I heard somewhere and I was doing it for a little while, this journaling practice. Mm. And the only practice at the end of each day, you would ask what like brought me joy or added to my life and what felt like it took away from my life. Mm. And by doing that each day, it was this very simple acknowledgement of like, all right, what do I want to be doing more of? Mm. Or what do I want to be doing less of? Or if I'm constantly bringing up this thing that feels like it's taking away from my life, whether that's bringing certain people into my life, certain habits, a certain job, whatever it might be. If if every single, single day you say, this is taking away from me, this is taking away from me, this is bringing me unhappiness. If you're complaining about the same thing every single day or week, yeah. It can bring you to the realization of like, oh, maybe I, maybe I do need to shift something. And in the reverse, also acknowledging that like, oh, wow, this, this brought me a lot of joy. Maybe I should do this more. Mm. If I spend time with this particular person or go outside mm. more or go for a walk or spend time with my dog, whatever it might be, bring in the things to your life that add joy and add to your life and recognize the things that you don't. Yeah, a lot of people have heard the saying, you are the product of the five closest people around you, like the people that you surround yourself by. If you have people who are working on their goals and they're very motivated and they're very positive and they give you lots of compliments and they make you feel good about yourself, 
you're just naturally going to succeed 10,000 times more compared to if you all your friends, you know, do nothing but smoking weed and playing video games. Not that there's anything wrong with those two things, but if that's all they do and you say, hey, guys, what goals do you have? And they're like, I don't know, man, just like I'm just trying to fucking smoke a, a J, you know, like. I don't know the words for fucking words weed. I'm sp- trying to smoke a blunt, man. I'm just trying to smoke a bong. Just I, trying to do weed. I'm smoking the know. devil's lettuce, son. I don't know. I'm ingesting the devil's lettuce. Got that MJ fever, son. If that's if that's all they want to do, then you can kind of ask yourself the question, do I feel like this is the life I want to live? Like, can I see myself doing this for the next 20, 30, 40 years? Like, is this how I want to spend my time? If the answer is no, you don't have to cut those people out immediately and be like, you guys are dead to me. No, they might be people that you have a lot of love for. You've had a lot of beautiful memories together. You can just spend a little bit less time with them and a little bit more time with people that push you towards the person that you want to be. You can kind of think of your future self Like think of the ideal perfect you 30 years from now. Is this current activity getting you closer towards that or is it kind of moving you further away from it? Mm. That's a really nice question to ask. Mm. You can also have a little think about the other influences that you're receiving. Like she said, you know, what you're receiving from the outside. Think of it more in terms of external things as well, like the media or what video games you're playing. Like I recently in the last probably six months or a year have started asking myself the question of like is it beneficial to me to be playing really violent video games where there's tons of blood and gore and all of that is that actually adding to my life and Mm -hmm. that's each individual person to make their own decision on that but for me personally i've gone i think i want to cut that out a little bit and i had this thought when we watched the last john wick movie john wick Mm 4 i was like wait this is just literally several hours of someone committing homicide over and over and over and over and over and over and over again because someone killed his dog. Mm-hmm. So he's gone, someone's committed murder. I'm going to match that with infinitely more murder. And it's all glamorized and sexy and Keanu Reeves is amazing and all of that. But I just asked myself in my heart, I was like, do I think this is good for my psyche? Is this moving me towards the peaceful, loving, helpful person that I want to be? Fuck no. No, this isn't helping me. And again, that's each individual's person, like like each individual can ask themselves that question. For me personally, I was like, I don't think I want to watch this anymore. And I said that to you. I don't want to listen to as much heavy metal music or any of the like stuff that maybe isn't good for my psyche, me personally. Again, not a commentary on other people and what you guys can watch, do whatever you want. But for me, I'm moving away from that stuff. And things like the media and the news. We stopped watching the news, what, like fucking five years ago? Quite a while ago. Like I stopped like 10 years ago, but you stopped like basically when you met me. Bef- I don't think before, you were watching a lot. That. Yeah, I don't think you were watching a lot before that. But every time you flip on the TV, sometimes we'll hear that we don't have a TV here. But sometimes you'll hear the TV, like if you're in the gym or something, you'll just hear it. And it's like war, death, destruction, pain, fear, suffering, awful, terrible, horrible. How could this happen? The government is oppressive. The government is awful. This is bad. Like everything just makes you feel negative this, mm. by intention because then you watch and you'll be afraid and you'll be scared and oh fuck i have to tune into the news otherwise i'm going to miss out on the latest thing that i need to keep up to date with and so many years ago yeah we both decided let's cut that out and again watch the news if you want to watch the news but i would be as you know mother Teresa says i would be a little bit strict with yourself and then be strict with what you're receiving from the outside in other words what she's saying there is be honest Like, is it really helping you to watch the news? And sometimes people will go, no, man, it's just the news. And it's like, that's not you being honest. Like, take some time, take an hour and go like, okay, how do I actually feel after I watch the news or I watch this TV show or after I listen to this person on the internet who's just spewing hatred and anger? And, you know, so many of you watch like black pill content where they're basically just complaining about women. Women suck. Women are awful. And lots of women do the same thing. Mm-hmm. There was like feminism content about how shit men are. Yeah. Does that make you feel good? Does that make it more likely that you'll go on a date with someone and have a good time and just enjoy their company and build a connection? Or do you sit on the date going like, man, this bitch is probably going to fucking take my wallet. Fucking bitches are always taking wallets. Meanwhile, she's just sitting there on the date going, la di da I'm trying to be the best person that I can. I'm trying to be nice. I'm having a nice date. And you're like, man, this bitch is probably thinking about how to take down all men. Fucking bitch. Bitches always do that. Like, it doesn't exactly make you feel rational, calm, happy or any of that. So, yeah, I like to be very strict with what I let into my life. I would say rather than the word strict, I use the word honest. I like to be very honest with myself and 
ask myself that question. Is this moving me towards the person that I want to be? Or is it moving me away from that person? What would my 80 year old self say about this thing that I'm watching that I say is harmless right now? Yeah, like you said, I think the word strict can be a very loaded term. Strict can be a very strict so word. So I don't mind the word like firm or like integrous, like almost Honest, like being, yeah. being firm in your boundaries. Yeah. And like I even had an example of this yesterday because it is something that we've spoken about in quite a bit of detail and even like trying to find like movies or like media to consume, like entertainment media. When we both want to watch a movie or a TV show, that can actually be a little bit tricky as an adult trying to find peace. Like wholesome, yeah. non-violent. Yeah. Fucking content. hell, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And funnily enough, like I I was doing quite a bit of like drawing and art and sketching yesterday. And I like sometimes having stuff on in the background. And I was flicking through Netflix and... <laughs> Netflix, holy fuck, man. Yeah. And funnily enough, like I in the past am someone who was always very drawn, not to horror, but to like thriller mm. and like true, true crime and mm. like murder mysteries and things like that. And I was flicking through some things that like intrigued me and I was really tempted, but we've been having so many conversations recently about how that doesn't add to my psyche. And you're right. Like even watching like lots of medical shows where people dying a lot, like you then feel weird and uncomfortable. And if you watch horror, like every time I've ever watched a horror movie, when I turn the lights off at night and go mm -hmm. to bed, there's a little part of me that's like, oh, I hope I don't get fucking murdered in my sleep. How could that not be affecting my psyche? I'm literally scared. It is literally, there's the evidence that it's affecting my psyche. Yeah. yeah it makes you that little bit nervous. And I think it- Around other people. Yeah. In a yeah. slight way, like it activates your nervous system. I literally feel nervous if yeah. I walk around at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. I get up very early and go for walks in the morning. If I've watched a lot of horror or something like that, I project that onto every random person that I walk past mm. in the morning when it's dark and I walk down an alleyway. Whereas when I keep that stuff out of my life, I walk down an alleyway, I smile at people in the morning and they smile back at me because I'm happy and I'm smiling. So, yeah. yeah. But my example yesterday was like being strict with myself of like, even though I was very intrigued by some of like the, <laughs> the thriller series and the murder mysteries so that came out. And yeah. Sexy. I, yeah. <laughs> I was super intrigued. I was like, no, I don't, as much as I think I would probably enjoy watching it. I don't think this is good for me. And that was like an example of myself being strict with myself, but good job. ultimately it feels like a, a loving, very conscious act. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I want to be fucking kind to myself. Would you let your kid, here's my favorite thing. Would I let my kids watch this? Fuck no. So what on earth makes me think as an adult, it won't have any impact on me whatsoever, not even 1%. Mm -hmm. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, yeah, movies like John Wick and all of that, they're fun. They're entertaining. They're really cool to watch. I like it. They're, they're, well done movies mm. but then afterwards i go out there and i'm like yeah if if anyone ever fucked with my dog i'd kill them and it's like wait what did i just say i just said i would commit murder and yeah you're not serious you're just fucking saying but it's like that's in my psyche now mm. i have that on my conscience the fact that i just said a statement of i would commit murder given the opportunity mm. and so like i asked myself do i want that on my conscience do i want to be going around saying that no i don't and so again, make your own decisions. None of this is telling us don't watch John Wick. Like do whatever the fuck you want. It's your life. But yeah, for us personally, we just cut some of that stuff out and it's been incredibly fucking helpful. And we get more done with our goals because we're not walking around with shit in our psyche of like, I'm going to commit murder. Oh, I hope someone doesn't stab me. Oh, I hope that the world doesn't fuck me over because I watched a lot of love songs or listened to a lot of love songs where they're talking about heartbreak and pain and suffering and how it's not fair and bitches are always like breaking your heart, like rap music, especially so much rap music is just like bitches ain't shit. And it's like, that's probably not good for my psyche when I'm going out and trying to meet women and connect with them. Having the thought in my head of like, bitches ain't shit is probably not going to help me connect with women very well. Yeah. I love, love, love this next one. I do not pray for success. I ask for faithfulness. This one actually reminds me of this really interesting thing that I heard when parents were asked, would you rather a child that was naturally very smart? Or had a really good work ethic. Oh, I love that question. Yeah. Work ethic every time, baby. But most parents picked naturally smart. Really? But really? Yes. Wow. Holy fuck. It's like they don't understand the concept <laughs> of self-improvement. Holy fuck. That's amazing. Wow, bro. And, and I no. believe it was somebody giving a lecture or somebody who had a background in teaching. And they actually said that like children who there's like the, the curse of like the naturally gifted child. Yeah. It comes that, with a lot of arrogance and laziness sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of the time, like as 
like learning advances and things become more challenging to the point where you can't just naturally pick it up. It actually takes a bit of effort to mm. learn things. And some humility, which the intelligent person usually doesn't have as, yeah. as default. The kids that were naturally gifted mm. often then really struggle and mm. that can come with like big periods of like failure or not doing very well academically mm. versus the kid who's had to try really hard their whole life. And then a practice when more hurdles come up it becomes a lot easier to just like roll with the punches and mm. keep working at things. And they often actually end up becoming more academically successful. And that's kind of what I see in this quote is that mm. it's, it's not about asking that everything will come to you and everything will just magically work out. I wish it was out. easy. <laughs> Don't wish it was easy. Wish you were better. Yeah. yeah. And wish like that wish you, for the strength to become better. Yeah. Your own commitment and dedication to things, because that is so much more applicable to to life, the skill mm. of like working hard or keeping on going or perseverance or resilience, that's applicable to every goal and every area of your life versus maybe having a natural gift or having mm. some luck in a certain thing. You don't necessarily learn anything from that. And with the skill of resilience, perseverance, faithfulness um, is another word for it. You can find success in everything. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. But with the reverse, if you stumble upon success that may be the only thing in which you find success if you didn't have to work to get said success yeah you see this in a lot of extreme athletes like any of you that follow basketball i can't remember his name um he's like a african-american dude he's got like black hair i can't remember his name but basically he's very talented and he could be one of the best players of all time you guys are probably, any of you that follow basketball, are probably going to know who I'm talking about. He has this thing where as soon as he decides that he doesn't want to play for a team anymore, he just starts phoning it in. And he literally goes like, oh, I'm injured. Oh, what's wrong? Oh, my ankle is sore. And he just doesn't fucking try. And then eventually the team will kick him because that like they can't break the contract. Like he can't just leave. He can't say like, I don't want to fucking play for this team because my mood is sour and I'm not mm -hmm. a very like team oriented person. He's very, very like self-focused and selfish. And so the second that he doesn't want to play, he'll just start fucking around and calling in sick and missing games and just pulling bullshit. And then they'll eventually say like, well, this guy fucking sucks. Like, I don't know what he's doing. They'll kick him. He'll go to the new team that he actually wants to be on. And then immediately game on, bro, like top player in the league all of a sudden, like top five player in the league all of a sudden just busting ass. And then six months later, he'll decide, you know what? I don't like this team either. And he'll just start calling in sick and phoning in sick. You guys probably know who I'm talking about because there's memes about him. Like he's literally renowned as a meme. Like someone will go to grab the ball near him and then he'll just go, oh, and he'll fall over and be like, oh, I can't play anymore. I'm injured. Like, oh, I'm fucking like lazy. As opposed to the hustlers, like, so, so he's a really good example of someone who has a lot of talent and a lot of natural success, mm. but he has no fucking work ethic. He doesn't have the right mindset. Compare that to, you know, in any sport, there's so many of these people who just had that fucking like mindset of like, I'm going to grind. In tennis, it would be like your Novak Djokovic's or even Rafael Nadal. You know, there's so many people in different sports who like grind, grind, grind put in a ton of effort and maybe they have talent. Michael Jordan's another really good example. He had so much natural talent, but holy crap, he matched it with work ethic and training from a young age. And so if you are dedicated to the action that you take rather than just demanding the success, or maybe you have some success, but you're lazy with it and you go like, whatever, I'm just going to take this for granted, man, you achieve 10,000 times more. So, so many people out there, so many of you guys and girls, especially you men, you know, that I hear from all the time, you're like, I can't meet a woman and have a girlfriend because I'm short. I can't have a girlfriend because I'm bald. It's like, yeah, so am I. I can't have a girlfriend because I'm ugly. I can't have a girlfriend because it's too late for me because I'm nerdy, because I'm autistic, because I have ADHD, because I'm old, because I missed out on the college experience. You have a million different excuses. Mm. Instead of focusing on that shit, focus on the action that you can take. Stop saying, I wasn't born with natural success, therefore I can't do anything. I wasn't born with natural talent. I wasn't white or I wasn't tall or I wasn't this. Who gives a fuck? All that you need is faithfulness in if the fact, have faith in the fact that if you take a lot of action, you will eventually get there. But you all haven't tried. Like those of you making excuses, you haven't tried. You've gone outside and talked to three women. That's not trying. That's not trying. Trying is talking to 1,000 women. Or you started a business, you know, three people gave you some money and then you kind of got bored and quit. That's not trying. 
trying is grinding on a business for like five years. And that doesn't have to be a painful grind, but like mm. it's working. We've been working on this business for like the better part of four or so years. And I'm thinking in terms of 10 or 20 years down the track. So start thinking more long term and have faith in the fact that if you take baby steps, keep showing up every day and just keep going, you will eventually get that success. But don't obsess about the success. Ask for the strength, either from other people or if you're religious or spiritual, ask from the universe or from God. Ask for the strength to continue carrying on. Ask for help when you need it. Ask for advice and all of that. But don't pray for fucking success. Mm -hmm. Success comes as a natural consequence of taking action. Like I am not successful because I just became successful. No, I put in a lot of work. I've done 1,600 pieces of content. That's a lot of content. I went out and talked to thousands of women on dating apps, like tens of thousands, maybe a hundred thousand. I don't know. Some obscene amount of people I put in that effort in terms of like improving my mental health and happiness and peace. I have read like a thousand books on it. Like I've put probably like five hours every day into my own self-improvement and learning every single day. So have you, you've done so much work on inner work and mental health and all of that. Mm. So put in the action and the success will come as a consequence. And we'll do one more today. Do not wait for leaders. Do it alone, person to person. Yeah, I think a large part of this is acknowledging your own power. Yeah. And what you are able to give or like the results you're actually able to achieve just by putting in action yourself. Because I think it's so easy to want to turn to an authority figure, especially when it comes to things like government, like they should be changing something. They should be doing something different. They should take action on this. Somebody should fix this, but not me. Yeah. That can be a very disempowered stance yeah. where <laughs> rather than doing something you, yourself, you spend all of your time and energy telling other people that like things should change or things should be different. And that doesn't really do a whole lot of anything mm. versus just showing up, taking action and say, what can I do in my immediate surroundings that would make an effect on the thing that I'm saying I want to change, whether well, that's in my own life or in the greater community. And that's when you're going to have a lot of impact. Like Mother Teresa, I think is one of the best examples of this mm. as some old small lady who went she was to, old when she got started too yeah yeah who went to another country and she didn't you know she didn't say that like the the poverty situation in india should be better and somebody the government should be doing something she just got there and she started just fucking put boots on ground <laughs> bitch started getting to work immediately she wasn't complaining yeah she just did the work yeah yeah and that work ethic and acknowledging mm. her own power what she was able to do within herself was then like that message was so much more powerful than like some woman who was like lobbying government. Yeah. Could you and, imagine like, starting Mother Teresa protests and things like that? Imagine Mother Teresa as your average person on Twitter, just bitching and moaning, like your average progressive or whatever, complaining about like someone should do something like just bitching and moaning. It's like, you have no impact on the world or the average person going to a protest. You're just showing up and jerking yourself off. You're not doing anything compared to Mother Teresa going, you know what? Fuck it. If I really think that there shouldn't be poverty, why don't I go fucking feed people? Mm. And she did. Yeah. And if you think that, you know, government should be doing X, Y, and Z, like just go volunteer at a charity. Yeah. Or like, or go work for the government if you really want to. I, yeah. I wouldn't say that's the most effective way of getting things done. You've worked in the government. Contracted through, yeah. Not, not the most effective place to go if you want to change something. True. So I don't know why you'd ask those people to be the people that change. It's always funny to me when people complain to like Joe Biden or like whichever politician. Like you need to change something. It's like you're literally complaining to the least effective people in the entire country. Mm. You may as well go complain to the homeless person. Mm. So go to a charity, go do something where they'll actually get something done. But yeah. I think that's something else you can take away from this is replace the word leaders with like expert. So don't wait for the experts to tell you what to do. Go out and try something. I say this all the time. So many of you like watch my content and you will leave a YouTube comment. So Andy, can you do a video on this? Can you tell me exactly the right thing to do? Can you tell me exactly what to say to a woman? Can you tell me exactly how to lose weight? Can you tell me exactly how to start a business? You're waiting for the expert to like give you permission, basically. Mm -hmm. That's what you're scared of. You're scared of doing the thing and you're saying, maybe if daddy Andy gives me permission, then I'll finally work up the courage to do it. Or maybe if he gives me the perfect game plan and tells me exactly what to say to each woman that I talk to or each potential client that I talk to, then maybe I won't feel fear of rejection. No, you'll feel that same fear of rejection. Like me telling you exactly what to say 
doesn't get you any closer to actually taking action. And so see this quote as a call to action. Go outside and talk to that cute girl in Starbucks. Go outside and approach people and say, hey, I've got this product that I'm offering. Would you like to buy it for $5? Go and actually do something. Don't wait for Daddy Andy or Daddy, you know, whoever else you follow on the internet or Mummy, whoever you're following, don't wait for your mummy or your daddy to tell you what to do. Go out and take action. Understand that everything I've achieved, yes, I've had a lot of people that have given me so much advice and I'm so unbelievably grateful to all of them, but I took action. I was not afraid to fail and I failed a million times. They weren't failures, they're learning experiences, but I made 10,000 mistakes. They're not mistakes, they're learning experiences, but I have, you know, stumbled 10 billion times there's been so many times I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. You and I sure as hell had no idea what we were doing in this relationship. We were two people that didn't know how to be in a relationship. And all we said is, okay, let's not wait for some relationship expert to build our relate. How would they even do that? You know, let's just do it ourselves. Let's mm -hmm. give ourselves permission to suck. Let's show up every day and take a baby step towards improving the relationship. And let's just not quit. Let's stick it out. And that's how you get any goal done. But that first bit, give yourself permission to suck is the key point. You don't sit around waiting for a leader or an expert or someone like a guru to tell you the perfect fucking pickup line. Maybe if I had the perfect fucking pickup line, then I'd be perfect at approaching women. No, you'd still be shit scared. You'd be terrified. You'd be inexperienced. You'd fuck it up anyway. The, the expert would tell you the pickup line and you'd walk up to the first girl and you'd be like, all right, I got this pickup line. And you'd be incongruent in your delivery. You'd be awkward and weird. You're someone who is inexperienced, maybe even a fucking virgin pretending to be smooth James Bond. I can't think of anything more incongruent than that. And people can tell you're not fooling anyone. You're doing a really terrible job and that's okay. Like it's okay to do a terrible job, but you're doing a really terrible job of being James Bond. James mm -hmm. Bond is only James Bond, first of all, because he's a fake fucking movie character who gets to rehearse his lines a thousand times. But someone who's really good at something and smooth is only good and smooth at that thing because they earned that, because they did it a thousand times, because they sucked at the start and looked awful and felt like a retard and then realized none of that matters. All that matters is I just try and improve a little bit each day. And so don't wait for other people to give you the perfect permission or the perfect line to say or the perfect thing. Go out and take some fucking action, right? No. And I think the last thing that I take away from this quote is this last section that says person to person. Mm. I think there can be the tendency, especially with like larger issues, whether that's poverty or living situations or whatever it might be, education. There's almost this, the urge to like zoom out and say, I need, we need to fix like pollution. We need to save like the whole need, world. Yeah, yeah. We need to fix this massive problem and write, write everything. And that, that can be quite lofty. Whereas Mother Teresa says, I'm going to help the person in front of them. Mother Teresa never intended to change the world. That exactly. was not her goal at it all. It was just, I, I want to help this. That person there is sick and poverty and in poverty and, and lonely. I'm going to go love them and give them some food. Exactly. And I think when you focus on your neighbor, like the person next to you, mm. like Jordan Peterson says, like, rather than trying to change the world, just like, just make your bed. Like, start with. Start small. Start with yourself. <laughs> start with your immediate surroundings. Go, you know, go volunteer at a local shelter or go and help an old lady cross the street or give money to a homeless person. Like that is going to have so much more of a profound effect helping someone next to you, someone in front of you than is trying to make these large scale changes mm. and often showing love to the people immediately around you can have a ripple effect because you mm. might not make that person's day and then they might go on to then be kinder to other people. And I think as well for yourself, like it's so much more impactful and meaningful to see someone in front of you yeah. get yeah. a direct payoff from something kind or generous or loving that you did. And I think mm. just focusing everything on the people in front of you is going to not only have a very strong impact on those you're helping, but also on yourself. Mm. Like it's going to be so much more rewarding to see very direct results from what you're one putting in. One person at a time, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mother Teresa talked about this in one of her books. I can't remember which book. I, I, there's a lot of books. Um, she talked about like she had the idea to join something like World Vision. And she was like, those people are already doing a beautiful job. Me going to World Vision does jack shit. I'm just some bitch in World Vision. Mm -hmm. And they're already doing a great job. But what they're missing is walking up. They do a decent job of this, but like this isn't their main focus. 
what they're not doing is walking up to each person on the street who's forgotten and lonely and world vision didn't get a chance to help that person. Mm. And so the person who's actually forgotten and all of society has forgotten about them, they have no dignity, nobody loves them, they think they're going to die alone, she would walk up to that person and just hold their hand and look into their eyes and give them some rice and give them some bread, maybe give them a home or a shelter. You know, they sheltered hundreds of thousands of people across like 6,000 of these different like little homes and houses and th things that they built around the world, she would just love that one person and be like, hey, you're loved. What's up? Is everything okay? And there were quite a few people that she talked about in her books who would start crying. There was one old man that was crying when she held his hand and he just said, it has been a long time since I have felt the touch of a human hand. And I was like, that's really fucking beautiful, man. Like, mm -hmm. that's really... And there were so many people that literally were dying and she would take them to her hospitals or to her homes and they would die with either her or like one of the other nuns holding their hand. And as they would hold their hand, they would say, thank you. Like mm -hmm. they would just say nothing, but like, thank you. Thank you for being here. Like, I'm not afraid anymore. It's like, that's a big fucking thing. Someone dying, not in fear, but in gratitude and love and saying like, thank you. And they would gently stroke them and be like, hey, God loves you. Or if you don't believe in that, you know, she would, whatever religion they were, like Hindu God, you know, what's the, is it Brahmin? The one with like the eight arms? whatever that god loves you <laughs> hindus have like lots of different gods i think they have like five gods or something i don't know whatever one of those gods loves you you're loved it's all good like mm -hmm. everything's okay i do you remember a, the live stream that i i bring this up every now and then because it's a really good example of this so i did a live stream a while ago and i was just answering all of your questions and you know giving advice and all of this and there was a guy in there that i could see was in a lot of pain and a lot of anxiety and he said andy you're not doing enough to like save all men. You're not doing enough to change men's lives. And there's so many men out there that are hurting and women are abusing them and hurting them and all of this. And, you know, they're in pain because they can't get a girlfriend and they feel heartbroken. Andy, why aren't you doing more to like help them? You owe it to them. You have an obligation to help them. And I kind of chuckled because it's exactly this quote. And it's like, Oh, my beautiful friend, I understand where you're coming from, but there's like a thousand things you do not understand here. First of all, imagine the narcissism that I would have to have to think that I am the second coming of Lord fucking Jesus Christ, that I'm going to go out there and save all men. Imagine the narcissism I would have to have for that. You know, I would probably become the next fucking Stalin or Lenin or Chairman Mao or any of these people who go like, I am the great supreme leader. And then before you know it, well, oh, I've killed 6 million fucking people. Like that's that pathway, the narcissistic ego to think that you're saving the world. That was Chairman Mao. If any of you don't know Chairman Mao, he thought that he was going to bring prosperity to China by letting like 100 million people starve. Because he was like, if 100 million of those poor people starve, then everyone who's left will be like, we got more resources. And so that was his great, I believe they called it the great step forward. Like, holy shit, that's some dystopian shit. But that's that can be the consequence of someone who narcissistically believes that they are going to save the world. Hitler did the same shit. Hitler thought he was on a fucking God-given mission, that God condoned everything that he did to fucking eliminate the Jews, and then suddenly the world will be happy. And so, yeah, I might not become the next fucking Hitler, but that's where that pathway can lead. I don't think I would go down that pathway, but that's the point. You have to be fucking narcissistic to think you're going to save the world. And more to the point, if I'm focusing on saving all men, then I'm too busy, like that would make me too busy because that's such a big fucking job. Mm -hmm. That would make me too busy to help or love any of you. You would leave a YouTube comment and I'd be like, sorry, I don't have time for this bullshit. I need to go save all men. Someone in my coaching program would be like, Andy, I'm really struggling. Like, remember the guy a couple of months ago who you probably know who I mean. His name starts with L mm -hmm. and he's a nice boy. Mm -hmm. And he left, a. he emailed me and he was like, Bro, I'm really struggling. I, I don't know if I belong in the coaching program. I, I can't even tell this to the coaching group, even though everyone's nice and welcoming and loving and all of that. I feel like I don't deserve to be here. And I took the time to record him like an hour long voice message, just pouring my heart and soul into him and saying, hey man, like I understand. I didn't have to do that. He wasn't paying me for one-on-one -on -one coaching. I could have just said, sorry, bro, I don't have time for this shit. You only paid for group coaching. I'm not fucking spending an hour of my time giving you one-on-one -on -one coaching. Sorry, bro, I don't have time for that. That That's the consequence or that's some of the consequences of 
believing that you or taking on that stress to like save the whole world. And this is why you see some of the people who are most outspoken about political causes or like the protesters or people who are, you know, go and do marches and all of that. The people who are like super, lots of people who are like super extreme, like liberals or super extreme conservatives. The people that are most outspoken about like the world needs to change are some of the least compassionate and kind and loving people that you'll ever meet. And they're doing kind of the opposite of changing anyone's life or changing anyone's mind because they're so fueled by that, like, first of all, narcissistic pride. There's a lot of pride in, like, being a protester and being on the right side of history and being a good person, all of those stories. But they're so driven by anxiety and fear and guilt and shame and hatred and all of that that they're not able to love one person at a time. They would love to, like, they want to, but they just don't have space for it in their heart because they're, they're feeling a lot of pain. And that's what this guy, you know, on the live stream was feeling a lot of pain and, and all of that. And so I gently flipped it around on him. And I said, my friend, what if you take this anxiety and this stress that you're feeling about all of the men in the world that you think are suffering? And I'm sure there are men that are suffering. There's obviously some men that are suffering. Like, yes, this is a correct mm -hmm. statement. But what if you take that anxiety and that pain that you're feeling towards all those men and all that guilt and that pain? And you just go out and find one man on the street right now who would love a little bit of help with his dating life. And you don't have to be the expert, but just support him. Just be like, bro, would you like me to be your wingman and I can help you talk to some women? Or reach out to all of your friends and be like, hey, bros, like, are you guys doing okay? Is there anything that you're struggling with that maybe we haven't talked about? How, how, are you guys happy? How's your mental health? Do you need me to listen to you? And you could do that for women too. It doesn't have to just be men, but this guy was very focused on men. Mm -hmm. And so like, be the change that you want to see in the world. Start one person at a time, like it says, person to person. Understand everything that I have done to get to this point. I never intended to just build a big YouTube channel or build a Spotify or build a coaching business. We didn't plan on building that. I was just like, this one person right here in front of me on this forum right now is struggling and suffering. Let me write 10 paragraphs to him to try and help him. Okay, now this next person here is suffering. Let me help him. That's all I do in my coaching program. I don't like preach to the crowd. I try and do it with all of you as well. Obviously, we're putting out a video here, you know, to all of you. But every time any of you leave a comment, what do I do? I fucking reply to it. Some of them I write like 10 paragraphs trying to help you, that one person. I could say, I'm too busy for that shit. I don't have time for that. I'm trying to build a business, bro. It's not scalable to help one person at a time. I heard someone say that to me the other day, actually. I recorded them a voice message for free. And he said to me, hey, I know this isn't scalable. But I really appreciate that you took t the time to do this. And I was like, fuck scalable. I don't give a fuck about that. Why do I give a fuck if it's scalable? I'm just trying to help one person at a time. That's all Mother Teresa did. You worry about scalability later. And what you'll find is the same thing that I found. If you genuinely pour your heart and soul into helping one person at a time or loving one person at a time or giving to one person at a time, People want to fucking get on board with that because that's some special shit. That's rare in the world. Most people are focused on getting. They're not focused mm -hmm. on giving. And so what will happen is friends, lovers, random people will help you. You have helped me so much in the business. Cam, my good, beautiful friend who looks a lot like me, funnily enough, bald ginger just like me, has stuck around and helped me. At the start, he did it for free, and then we started to pay him a little bit as soon as we could afford to. He did all that shit for free. Why? Because he's like, well, fuck, man, you're helping one person at a time. I want to help you with that. If I help you, you'll be able to do more, Andy. And then we had Ke uh, Taylor and Ed, two of the other coaches in my coaching program. They stick around for free. They're in there for free. Because they're like, bro, if we help you just a little bit, we can see that you'll be able to help more of the coaching clients. And so we're going to stick around and like, we want to, we will help you and do that for free. And it's like, holy fuck, you guys, I'm so grateful. And then the coaching clients themselves in my group, so many of them say, bro, I, I really want to come on your podcast, on your YouTube channel and share my testimonial and share what I went through because I think the coaching is really going to help people. And if I can do something to help you, I fucking want to. Because I can see, Andy, how much love you poured into me individually and each of the other people. You weren't thinking big and trying to save the world and all of that. You actually gave a fuck about me. You weren't just trying to build or expand or make a ton of money or any of that shit. Not that there's anything wrong with those things. But you cared about me deeply. And so I care about you. I want you to win. Mm. And that just keeps growing. So many of you in the YouTube comments write really fucking nice things that make me keep wanting to do this. I'm going to do this regardless of what you say. But... Those comments really fucking help. They're really beautiful. We get emails that are really beautiful. That is the effect of helping one person at a time and loving them. 
rather than sitting around waiting for someone else to do it or rather than trying to save the world all at once. Anything to add? Mm-mm. Amazing. If I, I guess we'll wrap up there. If you'd like any more help with any of this, obviously I offer coaching. There is a link in the description below to that. I'm happy to jump on a free call with you and make sure the coaching is right for you. We have payment plans, all of that good stuff. And if you're not interested in the coaching program, amazing. Maybe read a little bit of Mother Teresa. You might find her pretty fucking inspiring. Mm. She was absolutely a hustler. She got a lot of stuff done. And as she focused on, go take some action. Don't just watch this content. Go take some action action what are these lovely people what would we like them to do if they want to to go out there and crush your goals go crush those goals hell yeah wow